Welcome back, everybody. Today we will be reading chapter 16. Let's get into it. The voice of the woman on the news vid never wavered or changed in tone as, the, as she reported the details of their latest lead story. In addition to the fine, the Alliance has agreed to voluntarily accept numerous trade sanctions as punishment for violation of the Citadel Conventions. The majority of these sanctions are in the fields of drive core manufacturing and production of Element Zero. One economist warned energy prices back on Earth could jump by as much as 20% in the next. Anderson flicked the vid off with the remote. I thought it would be worse, Kaylee said. Goyle's a tough negotiator, Anderson explained, but I still think we got lucky. The two of them were sitting on the edge of a bed in a Hatter hotel room. Anderson was the one who had actually rented the room, charged it to the Alliance as part of his investigation. However, sharing a single room was nothing more than a necessity of their situation. He still hadn't mentioned uh, Kaylee to anyone back at Alliance HQ, and it would have raised suspicions if he'd requested another suite, or even a double bed. So what happens now? Kaylee asked. Where do we go from here? Anderson shrugged. Honestly, I don't know. Officially, this has become Spectre business, but there's still too many loose ends for the Alliance to just walk away. Loose ends? You, for one. We still don't have any real proof that you aren't a traitor. We need something to clear your name. And we still don't know who the real traitor was, or where they've taken Dr. Kwan. Taken Dr. Kwan? What do you mean? The ambassadors convinced Dr. Kwan is still alive and being held prisoner somewhere, Anderson explained. She thinks he's the whole reason the base was attacked. According to her, somebody w wanted his knowledge and expertise, and they were willing to kill to get it. That's crazy, Kaylee insisted. What about the alien technology he found? That's the real reason for the attack. Nobody knows about that yet, Anderson reminded her. Just me and you. I figured you would have passed that on, she said, dropping her eyes. I wouldn't do something like that without telling you first, Anderson assured her. If I gave them that kind of information, they'd want to know where I found it. I'd have to tell them about you. I don't think we want to do that yet. You really are looking out for me, she whispered. There was something strange about her subdued reaction, as if she was embarrassed or ashamed. Kaylee, what's going on? The young woman got up off the bed and walked to the other side of the room. She paused, took a deep breath, then turned back to face him. I have to tell you something, she said, her tone grim. I've been thinking about this a lot, ever since you told me about running into Saren back at, at Deton. He didn't say anything but merely nodded at her to continue. When I first saw you at my father's place, I didn't trust you. Even after you fought off that Krogan, I couldn't be sure if it was because you really believed me or if you were just trying to win me over so I'd tell you how much I knew about Sidon. Anderson almost opened his mouth to say she could trust him, then changed his mind. Better to let her work through this on her own. And then we went to Deton, and you ran into Saren, and I know what happened out there. Even what you didn't tell me. What are you talking about? He protested. I told you everything that happened. She shook her head. Not everything. You said Saren thought about killing you, then changed his mind because he was afraid there might be witnesses. But you never bothered to tell him you came with somebody, did you? I didn't have to. He figured it out on his own. But if he hadn't figured it out, he would have killed you. You put your own life in danger rather than tell that specter I was nearby. You're reading too much into this, Anderson said, shifting uncomfortably. I just never thought to say anything until after he was gone. You're a terrible liar, Lieutenant, she said with a faint smile, probably because you're a good person. And so are you, he assured her. No. She said with a shake of her head, Not really. I'm not a good person. Which must be why I'm such a good liar. You've been lying to me? 
in his head, Anderson could hear the warning Saren had given him during their com- confrontation outside the ruins of Daton. She's lying to you. She knows much more about this than she's told you. I know who the traitor at Sidon was. I have proof. And I know how we can find out who he's working with. Anderson felt as if he'd been slapped across the face. He didn't know what hurt more. The fact that Kaylee had deceived him, or the fact that it was obvious to Saren long before he even had a clue. Please, she said, reading his pained expression. You have to understand. I understand, he said softly. You were just being smart. Careful. And I was too blind and stupid to see what was really going on here, he thought. The divorce must have hit him harder than he'd realized. He'd been so desperate and lonely that he'd imagined some special connection between him and Sanders, when all they really had in common was a connection to an attack on an Alliance base. Sacrificing everything to be a better soldier and had cost him his marriage. Now that his divorce was final, he'd let his personal feelings interfere with a military assignment. Cynthia would have laughed at the irony. I was going to tell you, Kaylee insisted, that first night, after you saved us from the Krogan, Grissom warned me not to. But you told him? He's my father. A man you barely even know, Anderson thought. Though he didn't say anything out loud, logically, he understood why she'd done it. But that didn't make it sting any less. She'd used him. She'd been playing him through the whole investigation, giving him little bits of information to keep him distracted so he wouldn't realize the truth. She had the answers he was looking for all along. Anderson took a long, slow breath and brought his emotions under control. There was no point in dwelling on this. It was over. Done. Thinking about how Kaylee had manipulated him wouldn't get them any closer to completing the mission. It wouldn't help avenge those who lost their lives at Sidon. Who's the traitor? he asked, his voice carefully neutral. Dr. Kwan, isn't it obvious? Anderson couldn't believe it. You're saying one of the most respected and influential scientists in the Alliance betrayed and helped murder his own hand-picked team? Why? I already told you. He was afraid they shut the project down. He must have known I was going to report him. The only way he could keep studying that alien technology he discovered was to destroy Sidon and pin the blame on me. You really think he'd be willing to kill you over this? Anderson asked, still skeptical. Over research? I told you he was re- obsessed, remember? It had some hold on him. It changed him. He, He's not in his right mind. She came over and dropped to one knee in front of him, her hands reaching out and clasping his. I know it's hard for you to believe me after everything I kept from you, but Quan was unstable. That's why I decided to report him, she explained. I knew I was taking a risk, she continued, but I didn't realize how serious things were until I heard the base had had been destroyed. That's when I saw how dangerous Dr. Kwan had become, how far he'd go. I was terrified. Her actions were completely justifiable, but Anderson didn't want to hear it. Not right now. He stood up, pulling his hand from her grasp as he walked away to the far side of the room. He wanted to believe her, but the situation just seemed too implausible. Could a respected man of science and learning suddenly turn into the kind of monster that would slaughter his friends and co-workers over some piece of alien technology? You said you had proof? He asked, turning back to her, turning back to face her. She pulled out a small OSD and held it up. I made backups of his personal files in case I needed something to bargain with. She tossed the disc to him. He caught it gingerly afraid of damaging it. Turn that over to the Alliance. It'll prove I'm telling the truth. Why didn't you just give me this before? I didn't know if Quan was acting alone. He has so much power and influence in in the Alliance. Admirals, generals, ambassadors, politicians. He knows them all. If I gave you that disc and you turned, turned it over to someone working with him... She didn't finish the thought. That's why I didn't tell you, David. I had to be sure. 
Why now? What's changed? You have people you trust in the Alliance, and I've finally decided I can trust you. He slipped the disc into the breast pocket of his shirt and came back over to sit down beside her on the bed. You also said you knew a way to figure out who Quan was working with. All his personnel files from Sidon are on that disc, she replied. A lot of it is extra research notes, stuff to keep to himself. I didn't have a chance to hack into everything before I ran, but I made sure I grabbed all the financial records, decrypt it, and trace all the all the transactions back to the source, and they'll eventually lead to whoever funded this whole operation. Anderson nodded appreciatively. Just follow the money. Exactly. They sat for a while in silence beside each other on the edge of the bed, neither one speaking, neither one pulling away. Anderson was the first to make a move. He stood up and went to grab his jacket. We need to get this data to Ambassador Goyle, he told her. I'll clear your name and tell us uh, tell it to, I'll cl- it'll clear your name and tell us who Quan's working with. Then what? she asked, jumping up eagerly to grab her coat as well. What do we do next? Then I'm going after whoever attacks Sidon, but you won't be coming with me. Kaylee stopped, one arm in the sleeve of her jacket. What are you talking about? He was still hurt that she hadn't trusted him, but that wasn't why he was doing this. He, wo- His wounded feelings were his problem, not hers. She had just done whatever was necessary to survive this whole mess, and he couldn't honestly blame her for any of it. It wasn't her fault that he'd let himself become emotionally involved, but now... It was his responsibility to make sure it didn't happen again. That Krogan is still looking for you. We have to make arrangements to get you off this planet. Get you somewhere you'll be safe. Wait a minute, she protested angrily. You can't just leave me behind. Those were my friends who died in the attack. I have a right to see this through to the end. Things are going to get rough, he told her. You're part of the Alliance, but we both know you're no soldier. If you tag along, all you'll do is slow me down or get in the way. She glared at him, but clearly couldn't think of anything to say to refute his argument. You did your part, he added, patting the pocket with the OSD. Your job's over now, but mine's just beginning. This is unacceptable, Dr. Shu Quan shouted. These things take time. Edon Hada replied, hoping to placate him. He'd been dreading this meeting all morning. Time? Time for what? We aren't doing anything. There's a specter here on Kamala. We have to wait until he gives up the leaves. Gives up and leaves. What if he doesn't give up? Quan demanded, his voice rising in pitch. He will. With Daton and Sidon both destroyed, there's nothing left to connect my name to this. Be patient, and he will leave. You promised me a chance to continue my research, Quan barked, realizing the topic of the specter wasn't going to give him enough opportunity to complain. You never said I'd be stuck wasting my time in the bowels of some grimy refinery. The Batarian rubbed the spot just above his inner eyes with a free hand, trying to hold the mounting headache at bay. Humans in general were trying, As a species, he found them excessively loud, crude, and impolite. But dealing with Dr. Kwan had become its own special brand of torment. Constructing the kind of facility you need is a difficult task, he reminded the scowling doctor. It took you months to adapt to the equipment on Sidon. This time, we're starting from scratch. It wouldn't be such a problem if you hadn't destroyed my lab and wiped out our supplier, Quan accused him. Actually, it had been Quan's idea to destroy the Alliance base. As soon as he'd discovered Kaylee Saunders was, uh, was gone, he'd contacted Adon and demanded his Batarian partner take action. He'd even provided the blueprints and access codes for the base. We couldn't let that specter get his hands on Daton's records, 
Adon explained for at least the tenth time. Besides, there are other suppliers. Even now, my people are working on building you a new lab, one far beyond the borders of Citadel space, safe from the prying eyes of the Council. But we can't just acquire everything we need with one enormous purchase, not without drawing unwanted attention. You've already drawn their attention, the human snapped, circling back to the topic of the Spectre yet again. Quan had been extremely agitated ever since the raid on Sidon, and with each passing day he seemed to grow more irritable, confrontational, and paranoid. At first Adon thought it might be guilt over betraying his fellow humans that was driving Quan's rapid mental deterioration. It didn't take him long to realize the true cause was something quite different. Quan was obsessed with the alien artifact. It was all he cared about, all he thought about, day and night. It seemed to cause the doctor actual physical pain whenever he wasn't working on unlocking its secrets. That specter's looking for us right now, the doctor warned him, his voice dropping down to a harsh whisper. He's looking for it. There was no need to clarify what it was. However, there was almost no chance anyone would stumble across the artifact by accident. It was still out where one of Adon's deep space exploration teams had discovered it, orbiting an uncharted world in a remote system near the Perseus Vale. The only people who knew its location were the two of them and the small team of surveyors and scientists that had first stumbled across it. And Adon had been careful to keep them on the surface of the uncharted world, completely isolated from all other contact. Had he known how irrational the Doctor would become, Adon might have done things differently. Actually, if truth be told, there was an argument to be made that Quan wasn't the only one acting irrationally. Before all this, Adon had made a point of never dealing directly with humans, and for all the illegal activities he'd used to build his fortune and empire, he'd never done anything that would fall under the jurisdiction of the Spectres. Yet, Almost from the moment he first traveled out to inspect the inc uh, incredible discovery of his survey team, he'd made decisions that many who knew him would have considered wildly out of character. But that was only because they were unaware of the sheer magnitude of what he'd stumbled across. It's not safe out there, Quan continued, his voice becoming a pleading whine. We should move it somewhere closer. Don't be stupid. Eden snapped. Something that size just can't be moved to another system. Not unless we bring it, uh, bring in tow ships and crews. That close to the Vale, we'd be sure to attract the notice of the Geth. Can you imagine what would happen if it fell into their hands? Quan didn't have an answer for this, but it didn't shut him up. So it stays out there, he said, his tone cynical and sarcastic. While you're so-called the uh, Ex experts down on the planet fumble around trying to grasp what they have found and i'm stuck here doing nothing there had been several scientists on the exploration team that had discovered the artifact the whole purpose of the trip had been to seek out unclaimed prothean technology in the hopes the Adon's corporate empire could somehow profit from it but none of them were specialists in the field of of artificial intelligence, and Quan was right when he said he, it was beyond their abilities. Adon had searched long and hard for someone with the knowledge and expertise to help him unlock the potential of what he had found. And after millions of credits spent on expensive and very discreet investigations, he'd been forced to accept the inescapable conclusion that the only suitable candidate was a human. Swallowing his pride, he had his representatives carefully approach Quan. Slowly, they'd drawn, uh, they'd drawn the doctor in deeper and deeper, appealing to his professional pride and scientific curiosity by revealing only the smallest, most tantalizing details of their find. The bizarre courtship had lasted over a year, culminating in Quan's visit to the system to see the artifact himself. The effect had been exactly as Adon knew it would be. Quan understood what they had discovered. 
He realized this went beyond mere human or Batarian interests. He recognized that this had the potential to fundamentally change the galaxy, and he'd thrown himself completely into its efforts to unleash that potential. But on days like today, Adon still had to wonder if he'd made a mistake. Your people are idiots, Quan stated matter-of-factly. You know they can't make any progress without me. They can barely even get basic readings and simple observational data off it without accidentally skewing the results. The Batarian sighed. This is only temporary, just until the specter backs off. Then you'll, be, you'll have everything you want. Unlimited access to the artifact. A lab right on the surface of the world. All the resources and assistance you need. Quan snorted. <laughs> A lot of good that'll do. I need experts in the field. People smart enough to understand what we're doing. Like my team at Sidon. That team is dead! Idan shouted, finally losing his temper. You helped kill them, remember? We turned them into ashes and vapor. Not all of them, Quan said with a smile. Not Kaylee Sanders. Idan was stunned into momentary silence. I know what she can do. Quan insisted. I need her on the project. Without her, we'll be set back months, maybe years. Should we send her a message right now? Adon asked sarcastically. I'm sure she'd be thrilled to join us if we just asked. I didn't say we should ask her, Quan replied. Just take her. We'll find some way to convince her to help us. I'm sure you have people who can be very persuasive. Just be sure they don't do anything to damage her cognitive abilities. Adon nodded. Maybe the doctor wasn't as irrational as he thought. There was only one problem, though. And just how are we supposed to find her? I don't know, Quan shrugged. I'm sure you'll figure it out. Maybe send that Krogan after her again. That's it for chapter 16. We'll see you guys next week with chapter 17.